This is the Sales Gravy Podcast. I'm Jeb Blunt, best-selling author of Fanatical Prospecting Sales EQ, Objections, and Inc., and I'm here to help you open more doors, close bigger deals, and rock your commission check. I got a question for you. How come you haven't taken me up on my offer? That's my offer to let you take any course on Sales Gravy for free, absolutely free. No catch, no cost, no kidding, no credit card involved. All you got to do is put in the code free course. And if you've never taken a course on Sales Gravy, you get your very first course for free, your choice of any course on the platform. So how come you hadn't taken me up on my offer? That's something you might want to think about because top salespeople are investing in themselves. And this is an offer for you to go onto the platform where thousands and thousands of salespeople and companies across the globe go to improve their sales skills. Look, don't wait. Just go there and take me up on my offer, a free course, no cost, no catch, no credit card. Just put in the code free course. Go to learn.salesgravy.com. That's learn.salesgravy.com. Or to make it super easy, just go to salesgravy.com and click on the e-learning tab in the top menu. On this episode, I continue my conversation with Diane Helbig on how to sell without selling. And we're going to be focusing on sales system, sales process, on pre-call planning, on what you need to do to execute the science of selling rather than the art of selling. You're going to love this conversation. It's packed with content. So you may want to grab a pen and take a a good note because there's some amazing insights that you're going to be picking up here, including the four questions that you need to be asking before you walk into any sales call. Now, here's my conversation with Diane Helbig. I want to shift to sales process. Sure. And and so we're we're kind of we're talking about these, you know, empathy and other focused and emotions and listening. So let's start with why do people need a sales process and and just walk me through what a sales process is. Okay. So first question, why do people need a sales process? They need a sales process because otherwise they will get busy with one part and they will drop off other parts. So for example, like a sales process is you figure out, you know your what the value of your product or service, you know who it's valuable to, so you've created your target markets. You pick one to start with. You can have multiple, it's fine, but you gotta be able to focus. So you pick one and you start the prospecting process. It's gonna include networking, it's gonna include um, cold outreach, you know, warm outreach. There's just going to be a variety of things that you're going to have to do. So there's prospecting. You're prospecting for the meeting, not for the sale. Then you get the meeting. That's where you're doing your archaeology and your discovery. You're asking all of those questions, matching things up. And part of your process has to be what is the next step, right? Because when you talk about empathy, this is, you know, people think, oh, I had this great conversation, but they have no next step at the end of that conversation, and then they can't figure out why they can't get the person on the phone, right? (laughs) So you have that next step, and it's a proposal that has a summary of what you heard, and then, you know, pointing out how your solution can meet that. And your next step really should be a conversation where the two of you sit down and go over that proposal together so you can be sure you heard them accurately, okay? So for me, you know, those are three different parts. And then, and then there's the follow-up, which is the fourth part. Mm-hmm. After you've actually made the first sale, you still have to build the relationship and follow up. But what people do is they get, so, they get prospecting like gangbusters. They get all these conversations. They have all these proposals they have to write. They stop prospecting. And then all of a sudden, and, and you know, these things maybe pop in a timely fashion. Maybe they're and all of a sudden they're not getting business, right? And a lot of salespeople, especially small business owners, get this idea in their head that, well, I have all these proposals out there. They're going to pop if they all pop at the same time. I can't service somebody new, so why would I talk to somebody new? And the answer is, until it pops, it's not your business, right? So you have to keep going. So my estimation is you have your process, you put it on your calendar, the steps, so you're sure you're doing them all the time, like you have your follow-up day, your prospecting, whatever it is. So you're doing all those things. 
And you said something so important, which was you have to be intentional. So in every step of the process, in my estimation, you have to be intentional about what you want to achieve in that step, you know, that conversation, that networking event, whatever it is. And it's not going home with a sale, right? It's learning something about somebody. It's building a better relationship with someone who you started a relationship with before. It's learning something new. It's finding out something. It's helping somebody. You know, it's connecting dots for somebody who um, has a need that isn't necessarily, can't be solved by what you sell, but can be solved by someone you know, right? It's that adding value all the time. So that, that I mean, that you know, that's the simple basic I think you need to have your questions written down and you need to walk into a sales appointment wanting to ask them and really listen to the answers before you do any talking. The, you said something there about, you know, objectives, you have to have objectives and you got to get to the next step. And, and you're exactly right. If you look at, if you look at any business, any organization that's having a difficult time in sales, 80% of the time it's one of two things. And usually it's both. Yeah. It's, there's not enough in the pipeline. So they've quit prospecting to manage the pipeline. So they're prospecting right. the pipe, right? They're just checking in on yeah. deals that are all stalled because they didn't get to the next step. So <laughs> if you don't get to the next step, your deal is going to, it's going to stall dead. So right. I loved, I loved how you talked about this, you know, this idea of when you go to a networking event, no matter what you do, you have an objective and yes. an objective is different than a next step. So you, you should have yes. an objective. Why am I here? What's my purpose? And then right. you should have a targeted next step yes. and then a fallback to that next step. So for example, if they say no to that, I've got something else I'm going to ask for so that I don't walk out with nothing. Yes. And what I find is that most people are walking into situations and they're totally winging it. And of course, winging it is stupid in sales. So yeah. for me, when I walk in, if I'm, if I'm going into any situation, I'm, I'm basically asking four questions. What do I already know? So what do I already know about the situation? Or, and usually what can I find out without having to ask anybody? So uh -huh. because there's an internet, you know, it's a really cool thing. Is they call it Google. I found it the other day ago. You type the things into it, it gives you answers. Shocking. So, you know, so what do, we, what do I know? What do I want to know? And uh -huh. And, and it's real, I think it's important for people to pay attention to what you said. Write your questions down. So what, when I say, what do I want to know? The questions that I want to ask, I start writing down. I start thinking about what am I going to do in this, particular, in this particular situation? And what I want to know has to align in my objective. Why am I here? I, I can't know everything. Sometimes if my next step is, I want to do an initial discovery call with you. And then I want to go to your location and walk around in your building and see how you're doing things. You know, are, I need to talk to a couple other stakeholders. I'm not going to ask all my questions at one time. And then, and then my next step, my next question is what's my objective? Why am I here? And then, and then what's my target and next step? And when I answer those four questions, what do I know? What do I want to know? What's my objective? What's my target and next step? I get my brain aligned to to be both intentional about listening and being in the moment and 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 having an organic conversation and learning and paying attention to the person and at the same time i'm also focused on outcomes so if you're a highly empathetic person and there's a lot of people that are that way where a lot of your meetings stall because you don't move to the next step this allows you to be intentional about what the next step is so you walk into the meeting knowing i'm asking for this and if you are like me more more self-centered you walk in and and you're, you're being intentional about being empathetic, stepping in their shoes, being other focused, right. and it just gets you uh, more aligned and, uh, and, and, and planning. And with that question, I, the question I have for you is that that would be essentially a pre-call planning framework of some sort. I'm not a big fan of like big forms or anything, but, but why don't salespeople plan? I mean, why, and, and this is, I mean, this is business owners, entrepreneurs, salespeople, anybody that's trying to close something more often than not, I see people winging it. And I'm just curious from your, all your experience, why do people do that? Oh gosh. I think there, there are a variety of reasons. I think one is because they've been told they're supposed to do a certain thing. And so they just head out doing that thing. You know, they're not really told, okay, let's come up with a strategy and a plan because it'll help you stay in the moment. It'll help you be intentional. And I love that word intentional because as you said, it helps both the self-centric and the empathetic come to a place where 
it's a process. It's a structure, right? It gets the emotion out of it. And, but it also pulls these folks back into having a conversation because of outcome, because of objective, you know? So, so it, it sort of puts us all in the same place. I, I think people, I think there's so many reasons. One, business owners hate the idea of selling. They hate it. So they're, they're not going to plan anything because they're sort of hoping the phone rings and business happens and, you know, woo right? So that's a problem all on its own. Salespeople, I think a lot of salespeople think they've got it covered, that they've got it figured out, that, that they, they get their own process. They would probably say they do have a process. They have a system. But as you said, it's just following up on the pipeline. It's just making those calls. So, so it's what I call activity as opposed to productivity. And activity is dialing, right? Activity is just trying to get a hold of someone who you can't, you didn't have a next step with, so you can't. Productivity is doing the research, as you said, using Google, finding out as much as you can, having an objective when you go to do something, keeping track, monitoring your progress, what's working, what isn't working, what do you need to shift, you know, all of those things. So that as you're going down the line, you're making sure you're checking all your boxes. You know, you're, if you monitored every 30 days, you'd know if you weren't doing follow-up calls, if you weren't having that next step, you'd know right away in real time so that you could adjust for it. So I just don't think they think about it. Um, I think they think sales are just going to happen. It's a weird, it, it, you know, it, it blows my mind, frankly, because I'm a real process and structure sort of person. I know if I don't put it on the calendar and I don't have a system, almost nothing's going to happen <laughs> anywhere in my, I won't pay my bills, you know? So I, I think it's a lot of salespeople have been trained to behave in a certain way that doesn't really have anything to do with process. I think what what you're describing, if I can, if I can paraphrase sure. is that, People think sales is an art, and it is. What we described earlier, like stepping in other people's shoes, being empathetic, influencing yeah. them through listening, that is an art. It's, it's nuance. It's, it's human. Yeah. But process is science. So it's, yeah. it's the, it, and, you know, tracking your follow-up calls, understanding your numbers, knowing what's going on, that is science. Now, sometimes we don't want to look at the science because it's easier to be delusional about what we're not yeah. doing than right. to actually, you know, see reality. But I think that the, I think that a lot of people, and especially business owners and entrepreneurs, they have this thing in their head about what sales is and what they think sales is, is, is this, this art form that sort of happens organically rather than an intentional process of, of organizing all the pieces and moving toward an outcome that solves someone's problems. And it, to me, it's like, if you were, if you were a pilot, like you wouldn't get in your airplane and go down the runway without going through a checklist because when you're at 30,000 feet and stuff goes bad, it's catastrophic. So right. you run your system and your process and your checklist before you take off. And it's the same thing with sales. Yeah. And if you're a business and especially in, you know, in, in, you know, in down economic environments and in a, a hyper globalism and the competitive nature of the marketplace, if you're a small business and, and you are living on a wing and a prayer, trust me, you, you, it's going to be really hard for you. You've got to go in there with the attention of winning. I hope this episode got you thinking, and here's my challenge. I want you to go back and look at how you are executing your sales process. How are you doing pre-call planning? How are you looking at your data about what happens in your accounts? And how many deals are stalled because you didn't get to the next step? Just take a look at it. Look in the mirror and, and, and think about what you need to do right now to change how you're executing the sales process. One of the easiest things you can do is make sure that you're walking into every sales conversation, knowing what your targeted next step is, knowing what you're going to ask for, and then asking for it. Go do this, and I promise you that you're going to learn a few things about what you're doing that can help you improve. You may learn about things that you're doing right now that are that are working really, really well. But overall, you'll get better because you start executing the science of selling. Now, make sure that you go to salesgravy.com, click on the e-learning tab in the top menu, and go pick your free course. If you're a first-time user, it's really simple. Just go to Sales Gravy University, enter free course when you check out, and you won't be charged anything for any course that you desire.